So once again, good morning all. This is Pratap Jadav working as structure engineer in Maida Research and Development, New Delhi. I welcome you for the today's session entitled as Temperature Loading in Maida Civil. So in this webinar, we will discuss about briefly the conceptual part of the temperature loading when the bridges are concerned. And I will link the theoretical definitions with the Maida Civil to extract the results using the software. So bridge structures are designed for the strain case and the stresses during the strain service stage need to be checked to ensure the safety of the structure in terms of deflection, then vibration as well as the aesthetic. Needless to say the stresses developed in the service stage should be within the permissible limit. So the variable like uh, creep, shrinkage and the temperature acts only the service stage. So among this, the effect of temperature is more than creep and shrinkage which are directly depending upon the effect of temperature. Uh, so hope the uh, screen is visible for everyone and uh, there is no problem with the audio. If you have any questions you can just type in the chat window okay? or even if you have any specific problem you can just raise the hand here using this pan option. So any questions which we will discuss here, so that will be replied at the end of the webinar. Okay. So coming to the contents of the today's webinar, so first I will briefly introduce about the what exactly the temperature loading. Okay. Then uh, what exa uh, the exact effect of the on the bridge structures, so mainly the deck part. Then what are the IRC guidelines given? for the temperature loading. Then how we can input this temperature loads using the software Midas Civil. And uh, we'll check some of the sample test models for which we can verify the software results with the manual calculation. And uh, the last one, there are some specific uh, questions asked by the engineers. So that will be mentioned here and uh, how we can troubleshoot this particular problems that we'll discuss in the FAQs. So coming to the introduction, so the temperature stresses are caused due to the, as the name suggests, it's due to the temperature action. So whether the temperature is very high or very low, it induces the temperature in the bridge elements, especially at the bearing and the deck joints. So these temp uh, temperature stresses are tensile in nature and which produces the tensile cracks. So to resist this, we have we are providing the additional steel reinforcement perpendicular to the transfer uh, longitudinal direction or you can see the main reinforcement as well as we can provide the expansion joint at a subsequent intervals. So the temperature action for the structure changes on the daily, we can say the short term as well as the seasonal that is called it as a long term climatic basis and it influences the overall movement of the structure. So these movements have implications of the design of the bridge especially the design bearings, design of the bridge bearings and the expansion joints. Uh, so now generally when, uh, when we say the temperature loading, so these effects we are uh, correlating in two parameters that is the changes in the effective bridge temperature okay, uh, which causing the expansion and contraction in the day. So we call it as a uniform temperature and the another one is the difference in the temperature that is between the top surface of the day and at the intermediate level at the depth of the girder as well as the day causing the total Gutter to distort. So, so this distortion generally we consider in the in case of the temperature gradient. So, in depth, so we'll discuss about this uniform temperature. So, superstructure will either expand or contract due to the change in the temperature. Okay. So, generally we call it the uniform temperature, and this moment will introduce additional stresses or the additional forces in case of the statically indeterminate structures which results in the displacement of the bridge joints and the bearings that need to be taken into account. Then uh, temperature gradient load, so 
bridge decks are exposed to the sunlight and uh, thereby causing them to heat up much faster than the bottom of the structure. So there will be a difference in the temperature at the top as well as at the bottom of the girder. So this thermal gradient can induce the additional stresses in the statically indentment structure. If however the structure is built using the very thick concrete or we can say for the structures where we are having the mass concrete has been used. So the thermal gradients should be investigated especially in the environment where the temperature fluctuations are the adverse. So what exactly the effect of these bridge structures? So I am considering here the two conditions. One is the free moving decks. You can say the simply supported deck. And the another is the integral bridges. Okay. So for a free moving decks, which generally establish the range of the movements in the deck. Okay. And they readjust during the expansion for the actual temperature when the joints and the bearings are installed. Whereas for the uh, integral type of bridges so for the durability reasons it is preferable not to provide the expansion joints or we can see the bearings and to design this deck which will be act as a integral with the supporting structure so this construction will remain the deck expansion and the contraction moment and the problem that arises while designing this restraint structure is deciding what mean, mean temperature has to be taken where the deck is made integral with the supporting structure. Okay. So these are the two effects we need to consider. So again uh, that we have discussed that uh, the uniform temperature which causes the change in the axial length of the member while the temperature gradient causes the bending deformation. If the longitudinal expansion to the uniform temperature is pre prevented. The girder may experience considerable axial force which could lead to the damage of the structure and co uh, may cause the cracks that we already discussed. So it is preferable to add off the expansion joints for the free movement of the structure members due to the variation in the temperature and also provide the required steel or the pre-stressing force to encounter the bending deformation due to the temperature gradient. It is also intended to know the variation of the temperature gradient as the number of continuous span is increases and the amount of flexural moment developed to the temperature gradient. So now coming to the IRC guidelines. So IRC recommends some specific guidelines for this type of temperatures. So as we have discussed there are two types of temperature. So one is a uniform temperature. So for uniform temperature, uh, we have specific uh, isotherms, which is given in the IRC-6. So generally this isotherms will give the maximum yearly as well as the minimum yearly temperature as per the region. Okay. So for the uniform temperature, generally we are considering the mean difference between the minimum and maximum temperature. And uh, we have given the guidelines for when this particular difference is more than 20 degree. So generally we are considering this mean temperature and there will be change in the temperature for plus minus 10 degrees centigrade for the rise and fall respectively. Similarly, if this temperature difference is less than 20 degree, so we are generally considering this temperature difference of plus minus 5 degrees centigrade. Okay, this is for the normal case. If it is snow bound areas, so it will be changed for the 35 to 50 degrees centigrade also. So this maximum and minimum shed air, air temperatures are converted to the effective bridge temperatures considering this uh, isotherms for the maximum and for the minimum condition and it will be multiplied by the coefficient of thermal expansion and the deck length to calculate how much the deck length will expand or contract. So the expansion and contraction in the deck can either be accommodated by providing the joints and sliding bearings or by restraining the moments and descending the structure to resist the force developed. Okay. The another one is a temperature gradient load. So for temperature gradient load, this is mainly for the RCC or the concrete girders or the precast guard, uh, pre-stress girders for which 
we are generally considering there is a variation of the temperature across the depth. So we can say it's a non-linear temperature variation. So if you refer, uh, I will explain again in this particular inputs while defining in the software that how this particular temperature can be added. So this generally we are considering two cases here that is for the positive temperature as, for, as well as for the reverse temperature case. As for the uh, depth variation, so we are specifying how much is the change in the variation uh, temperatures at each level as per the temp height difference given in the IRC6. Similarly for the steel composite girders, so here again the, depending upon the thickness of the deck, okay, so we need to specify what is the temperature variation across the girder. So now coming to the software inputs, so we have a five types of features available in the Midas Civil. So one is element temperature, temperature gradient, beam section temperature, section system temperature and nodal temperature. Okay. So the element temperature, generally this, uh, this input is useful when you are having the uniform temperatures, whether it is a beam elements or the plate elements. So to consider this uniform uniform temperature effect we need to just specify here what is the final temperature so we can specify here the initial temperature as per the region or we can consider the datum temperature as per the mean temperature available as per the region and with respect to that, that initial temperature plus the delta t that is the change in temperature what will be the final temperature then we, we need to input so that is nothing but the initial temperature Second input is for the temperature gradients. So again, this temperature gradient is uh, just to consider what is the variation at the top and bottom, or we can say the left and right of this particular section. Here we can't define the temperature at each, each and every depth. Okay. So there are two options here available, that is beam and plate. So we're not specifying the beam. So here simply we can specify what is the change in temperature at the top and bottom face of this particular section in case of the beam and similarly if you are having the plate type of element so for plate for the top and the for bottom face what is the temperature difference that we can specify here here we can't give the temperature which is given in the IRC6 the nonlinear temperature variation third input is for the beam section temperature so this beam section temperature is mostly used for the temperature gradients for the nonlinear variation of the temperature so software provides the input in the beam section temperature option. Here we need to specify whether it's the section is defined using the AutoCAD or we are just inputting directly the section properties. Another option is the PSC composite. If you have defined the section from the standard section that is using the PSC viewers, so the program will directly calculate the width at each of the depth and it automatically consider that particular width for the eigenstress calculation. So this is the difference between this general and PSC composite. Okay, If we have created a section from the AutoCAD, even though it is a PSC or the composite type of section, we need to go with the general section. So general means we are just inputting the general sectional properties. Okay, The software don't know what is at each depth, what is the width of that particular section. So that's why we need to go with the general. So here uh, we need to specify the width and the height and at each height what is the temperature di difference. So if you refer this particular inputs, so as I said the temperature gradient option, the one which we have discussed in the previous tab, this is mostly for the, just for the change in temperature at top and bottom. So this is nothing but the temperature gradient. When we consider this beam section temperature, suppose if you consider this particular profile, Okay, so at top there is a T1 temperature and at a certain date there is a T2 and then it is changing up to the CG level 0. So suppose if I want to define this particular temperature, I will take the help of beam section temperature and here B. So this B is nothing but here if I take the example of this PC box. Okay, so for uh, this box section, so I am considering this T1 temperature for this particular part of the structure. So say I am considering from this level to this level that is say at a depth of 0.15 meter. So I need to consider 
what is the B value for this equivalent part of the section. So internally when I'm selecting this PSC composite, the program inter internally converting this particular section into equivalent rectangle. Okay, taking this as an area and the depth which you are considering. So it will converting it in, into a rectangle and the what is the equivalent B that B will be calculated by the program itself. When you are saying, saying the PSC or composite section. Now if I select the general section, so this B cannot be calculated by the program. So for that, I need to calculate from the either from the AutoCAD or from the Excel. So we need to formulate what will be my equivalent B at this level and that B I need to select here manually for the general section. Okay. So that is the major difference and then uh, this H1, H2, so this will be depending upon the height that will be specified here. So that is the difference between this general section. Next is the six, uh, system temperature. So this system temperature is nothing but if I want to consider the temperature variation for the complete structure, okay, say I have modeled the complete box, uh, box curved top slab and I want to consider the complete, uh, this te particular temperature for the overall slab part. So for that, I no need to select uh, input manually for each and every plate. Just I will specify here the final temperature with respect to this initial temperature. And this particular temperature will be applicable for the, the one, the model which you have created. Okay. So it will be applicable for the entire structure, not for the part structure. So this is nothing but the system temperature. Whereas the element temperature will be applicable for just for the selected part of the structure. Okay. So we need to select the particular part and then apply the structure. Here you no need to select the structure part, just it will be applied default for the entire structure. That is nothing but the system temperature. Coming to the nodal temperature, so this nodal temperature, uh, say we are considering the thermal variation load analysis okay, for the certain elements, say for the complete structure itself here. And uh, I need to consider the temperature variation for different, different part of the structure instead of the entire structure. So for that, I will just specify here the final temperature and I will select the the particular part of the structure and it will be directly applicable to the particular node location only instead of the element location. Generally with the load which are applying the temperature load, it will be applied for the elements whereas this particular option will give the load for the node location. Okay, So this different uh, time per temperature can be assigned to the different part of the structure using this nodal temperature option. Now coming to the uh, software demonstration, so I am considering here the five cases for the input parameters, how we can apply the temperature for different cases. So I consider the five cases, that is one is the uniform temperature for the continuous PSC box cutter, which is modeled as a beam element. Second is the uniform temperature for continuous PSC composite girders, again this is as per the beam element, it's a continuous girder, that is for the cast in situ girders. Second, uh, third is the stress due to the uniform temperature for continuous slab. So here I am considering the plate type of element and how we can apply the uniform temperature for the plate elements. Fourth one is the stress for the due to temperature gradient for the simply supported PSCI girder. So here uh, how we can verify the temperature applied for the PSC I girder that is the beam element how, and how we can uh, for uh, verify this with the manual calculation that I will going to explain here and then stress due to the temperature gradient for the slab bridge that is how we can apply the temperature gradient load when you are modeling the structure using the plate type of elements. So these five cases we will discuss here. Uh, just I will directly go to the model. So I am considering the first case that is a three span continuous model. So generally again uh, I'm just explaining how we can verify the uniform temperature. Of course, if it's a, a continuous structure, so for the continuous structure, it depending upon your boundary conditions, what boundary conditions are there. If it is a simply supported, that is a just where if you are restraining the vertical strains and the transverse, if you are releasing, then there will be negligible stresses will be induced in the cross section. Okay, so that actually it is uh, showing in this particular stress at the top. This is actually the results part for this continuous one. Let me just open the model. Okay. 
okay so here i am defining uh, discussing about the uniform temperature how we can apply that one so for that i put the load so in the midas we have this uh, options specifically for the temperature loading so if i go to the temperature pistis so here these are the options which we have just discussed earlier element temperature temperature gradient beam section temperature system temperature and nodal temperature so firstly i will discuss about the element temperature so in this element temperature that is the uniform temperature here we need to specify the initial temperature and the final temperature initial temperature again we need to check with the units so for the units we can go to the tools unit system and here you can specify the units for the temperature okay now for the initial temperature so again uh, as i said you can specify the effective temperature that is the mean temperature as per the region so for that you can click on this three dot button okay and from this three dot button next to this initial temperature you can specify here what is the initial temperature as per the region or you can put that initial temperature as a datum and you will make it to the zero so with respect to this particular zero what will be the change in temperature that will can directly consider it as a final temperature so most of the user they may confuse between this initial temperature and the final temperature you can input the initial temperature as per the region say it's a 20 degree or 20, 25 degree centigrade so according to this particular initial temperature what will be the final temperature so if you are putting the say 20 degree centigrade so we need to specify the final temperature has 20 plus delta t so if i am considering the 15 degree is my final temperature uh, 15 degree is my delta t value so final temperature will be 20 plus 35 degree okay if i keep this particular initial temperature as zero so in that case just my final temperature will be 15 okay so this 15 will consider as a delta t value when you are considering the stress axial stress due to the uniform temperature Uh, so here we have uh, so for applying this particular temperature load so I need to select the deck part I will select the superstructure part here and for the temperature rise case I am considering the temperature variation of So here I am considering the uh, final temperature of 15 degree centigrade and apply. So the temperature which will show here that will be the final temperature at each element location. Just let me analyze this particular structure. So as I said, uh, this is uh, due to the continuous structure and we are just restrained vertically at each of the location. So there will not be any stresses induced here. Just for the demonstration purpose, I'm just opening the another model here for the fixed one. Okay. Now if I go to the results, stresses and beam stress diagram okay. this is due to the uh, continuity effect they will not be in the stresses in the cross section ok so how to verify uh, so just I am considering because there is no restraint here I am just uh, considering here the one case that is for the fixed beam So I consider here the case of the fixed beam and for this fixed beam I consider the load of 25 degree is the change in temperature and for this temperature if I put the results stresses beam stress diagram axial stress so the temperature different uh, stress of 10.61 that is at the top location so as this is a beam type of element, generally we are considering 
while checking the stresses, so positive represent the tension and negative represent the compression. So at the top top section, uh, top of this gutter for the due to the temperature rise, it will be under the compression. So just this 10.6 we have verified with the initial te uh, temperature here. So I consider the EC modulus of velocity alpha change in thermal coefficient and the change in temperature delta T. So as for this formula we have calculated the ten, delta T value as 10.61 which will be verified with this particular case. So this is the first case. The same case I just uh, considered for the die gutter. So again for the PCI gutter, I consider here the continuous structure. So method of application of the uniform temperature is same. Just we need to input the initial temperature and as per this initial temperature I need, we need to specify the final temperature using the initial element temperature option. So just I will directly go to the next loading that is for the play type of element. So whenever you are having the play type of element. Again in that case also we use the same command that is element temperature and for that element temperature we will check the results. Fourth one that is the how to apply the temperature gradient load. That is a non-linear temperature variation and uh, how to verify this with the manual calculation. So I consider here the simply supported case and uh, it's just a eye gutter. So for this eye gutter, just I will go to the model part. So I am considering the, let me just explain about the input data first. So I have considered the single line element for the modeling of this particular girder and the property definition I have considered the user defined material properties or you can specify the concrete material as per the IRC. So you can specify the grade of concrete according to that. It will consider the model of elasticity, poisons ratio and the alpha value. So just I have considered here the user defined properties for this particular structure. In the section definition, so there are two inputs. If I go to the PSC or if I go to the PSC composite tab, okay, go to the properties, section properties, add. So there are two inputs while defining the section. One is uh, you can define this particular cross sections from the PSC tab. Say it is a PSC I gutter. So I can define here from the PSC I or any other section, box section. So that will be defined from the PSC. So from referring the GAD, you can just specify what is the height and the width. referring this particular PSC viewer and the section which is created either in the AutoCAD or the GAD. Okay. And uh, similarly for the composite type of section, whether it is a PSC composite, okay, I gutter or the D gutter. So for that you can refer again the PSC viewer and re referring this PSC viewer and this guide diagram, you can specify the input. Okay. If you define the section from this input, so the program will automatically consider the width variation at each depth location okay and uh, if we have created the section in AutoCAD or in the SPC tool then we need to take that particular section from the as a value type of section which will be taken as from the SPC so when we are importing this particular section from the SPC just the program will calculate here the what is the area and the sectional properties okay so that is the main difference between the general uh, this PSC value type of section is called as general section so this is general section or if I define the section from the section library okay so these are the standard section library and according to the section we can input this particular dimension okay? now for defining this particular section so I consider the typical cross section here so overall depth of the gutter is 1 meter okay? and uh, 
here is a point point 0.5 meter is the top width okay so other dimensions i just consider from the one particular cross section details uh, for while defining the cross section we need to uh, check on these particular options for calculating the shear check torsion check when you are performing the PSA design in the software itself Uh, so yeah, I am considering here the simply supported behavior and uh, for the inputs so let me just explain about the inputs here so if I go to the load temperature pistons and the beam section temperature so for this particular beam section temperature how we can apply this in input parameters so I am selecting here just I created another load case that the temperature positive gradient load type temperature gradient so as I said uh, I have created the section from the standard library so I will select here the PSC composite type of section okay so there is no codal provisions inbuilt in the program so we, uh, we should not uh, check on this particular option because this is applicable for the other types of uh, course here so this uh, inputs for the temperature gradient is user defined as a Indian code is concerned now the initial temperature as I said we can put the initial temperature as per the region or you can put it as a data measure 0 when you are putting this data measure 0 and if, I, if you refer the IRC 6 So for this temperature variation, we need to refer this nonlinear profile. So I'm considering here the total overall depth of the gutter is one meter. Okay. So I need to calculate for each depth what is the temperature variation. So I just show you here. So material properties, either you can input this material property as per the element what are the properties which are assigned to the elements in the uh, previous material definition or the user can also modify the existing material and you can just uh, specify that one so the program will consider for the temperature gradient load this will be the final input for the material properties reference so you can consider the reference as top or the bottom so this is mainly with respect to this particular section whether are considering this particular temperature variation taken the reference as top or taking the reference as bottom you can change the reference for the one particular input also say I am considering the reference as top now B as I said at every location up to the certain depth for which the variation of the temperature is there the program will automatically calculate the B value that is the width of the equivalent rectangle this is mainly for the PSA composite type of section so I'm selecting here the uh, B as from the section or user can also define this particular input manually also. Let's make this particular inputs in kiloton meter. Now H1, H2 and T1, T2. So this H1, H2 and T1, T2 is nothing but so this Z1, Z2, Z3. This is depending upon the section depth that is from the top. Z1 is from the top. Z2 is at the CG and Z3, uh, Z3 at the bottom or you can consider the reference as top and from that reference you can just specify at every depth what is the corresponding temperature okay. now so uh, I will explain here how this H1, H2 and T1, T2 will be calculated so we need to again refer this particular temperature profile h1 h2 is nothing but so this is your small h1 small h2 and small h3 which is respect to this particular guidelines and h1 h2 are nothing but if i consider this particular trapezoid so for this particular trapezoid if i consider the reference as top so for this top what is the reference location 
there is a h value at the top and what is the h value taking reference from here okay so this will be h1 this will be h2 the t1 will be corresponding to this level what will be the t1 corresponding to this what will be the t2 now h1 so if i consider the reference as this top of the girder okay or this top reference definitely the h1 will be zero and h2 will be so i need to uh, capital h2 will be so small h1 which will be equal to the small h1 and this h small h1 is 0.3 times of h or it should not exceed 0.15 so this small h1, I need to calculate 0.3 times of 1 meter, which is 0.3 meter. So for 0.3 meter, again, it which is exceeding 0.15 meter. So my small h1 will be here. So small h1 will be the 0.15 meter. So capital H2 will be 0.15. Okay. Then T1, so corresponding to, to the top, So corresponding to the top, the T1 will be 17.8 as I consider the initial temperature as 0. If I have, if I am having the 20 degrees as the initial temperature, so 20 plus 17.8, that will be the final temperature at the T1 at the top. So I am just inputting this temperature 17.8 and T2 will be corresponding to 0.15, it is 4 degree. This is the T1. So this is for the first part. Similarly, I need to calculate for the second part. Now for this triangle, now this is the H1 and this is H2, okay, from top. H1 is equal to H2 of the first part, okay. So H1 I am considering 0.15 meter and H2 is this small H1 plus small H2. Small H1 is 0.15 meter. So this H2 will be, let me just explain it here in this particular diagram. So here for this particular part, if I consider, okay, so this will be H1 and uh, this will be the H2 and this will be the T1 and this corresponding to H2 is the T2. This is for the first part. Now if I consider the second part, so for the second part, okay, so this H2 will be corresponding to this particular part. So this is nothing but H1. Okay. So this is equal to your H2 and this T2 is nothing but the T1 for the second part. Okay. So this is nothing but the input for this uh, temperature gradient. Now for this level again I need to consider the H1 and the corresponding T1, T2. So this H2 and T2. How we will calculate this? So H1 we know. So we already calculated this is 0.15 and T2 is 4 degree. Now for H2, so this H2 is nothing but H1 plus H2. If I refer here, so I have H1 as 0.15 meter. H2 is, so again this is 0.3 times of H, but it should not exceed 0.25. So it is again coming to 0.3, so which is more than 0.25. So this will be again 0.25. Now, so this H2 will be 0.15 plus 0.25. So this is nothing but 0.4. H2 is 0. So here I will input H1 is 0.15, H2 is 0.4, T2, T1 is 4 and T2 is 0. This is the second part. Then for the third part, for the third part, so we can't exactly say what is the temperature variation. at this level. So now uh, for this particular part if I calculate H1 and uh, H2 okay. This is I am considering for the third part. So what is the T1 and T2? So in this case you can consider the reference as bottom also. And from this bottom, 
you can take the references in the negative direction or if you are taking from the top so what will be h1 plus h2 and plus this particular variation so we know the overall height is 3 meter oh, sorry this overall height is uh, one meter so for this one meter okay so I have already calculated a uh, one meter minus so this h3 is nothing but 0.15 so total one my one meter minus 0.15 so that will be 0.85 meter so this h2 will be 0.85 okay and this h2 will be the overall depth that is one meter so that is nothing but the input for this temperatures so if you go to the software so this will be the 0.85 and this is 1 meter so I have not yet assi uh, assigned this particular temperature because the entire particular structure will be applicable uh, applied for this particular different temperature so first we need to input all these temperatures select the te se uh, section and then click on apply so this will be the 0 and this is 2.1 add now these temperatures, so at every time I need to select this particular B value which is taken as per the section. Okay, I select the structure here and then I will click on apply. So now you can see as per this particular temperature variation, the program will create the equivalent rectangles. So these uh, uh, rectangles are not to the scale, just it is showing this particular as per the width. So for 0 to 0.15 meter, so whatever the section property is there, so it is calculating the area and it is dividing this divide uh, depth and it is calculating the B value for the first part. Similarly, if I consider the second part, so it is considering the corresponding area into depth, okay, the, this particular depth and it is calculating the B for this and similarly for the third one. So likewise, this is the internal process for calculating the temperature stress. Due to, uh, due to the differential temperature in the middle civil. Okay, so just apply. Now if I go analyze the structure. Okay. Now if I go to the results, stresses, beam stress diagram, to the temperature gradient positive at top. Okay. Values. So this will be the temperature stresses for the, the given input. This is for the top and this is for the bottom. So negative represents the compression at the top and bottom. Okay, so how to uh, verify this particular loads manually? So for that I just take you to the Excel. So now in this case, so I am considering here the method adopted as per the VK Arena reference book. So this is I am uh, okay. so the calculation of the forces. Uh, so here I am considering this particular inputs as per the sections and the material definition in the middle civil okay. now i have divided this particular structure uh, section into the uh, internally in this particular into 10 parts so how to check this particular structure and how to divide this so if i put the software if you go to the beam uh, results beam detail analysis say so in element number three So for this beam, and if I go to the ref section, so in this, it is showing that this particular uh, section is giving the stresses at total 10 locations, okay, two at the top and two at the bottom, and apart from that, at the six intermediate location. But suppose sometimes if user want to check the stresses any other locations apart from this, so we can create the additional stress point here. So for that, I can go to the section manager 
either you can go from the section manager here or you can go to the properties section manager and stress points okay so this is shortcut for this stress points so if I go to the section manager B suppose if I want at any particular location say I will click on this point option and uh, the program will consider this particular coordinate location or user can give this particular inputs manually also so create this stress point apply and whatever the stress point 2 is generated that is the additional stress point so this additional stress point will give the corresponding stress at that location okay so likewise you can create the stress at any location now how to verify this one so I am considering mainly at this 10 location okay? and again in that 10 location 1, 5, 7, 9 and 4 it's a symmetrical one so for that just let me go to the Excel sheet so I have considered the fiber location as 10 okay now this is the uh, distance of the fiber from the top so for this is for the uh, distance of the fiber from the top okay. so I am considering this one uh, as 0 okay. and uh, this 4 uh, as a consider, uh, reference is considered as 0 and for each of the location I need to calculate these particular vertical distances now temperature at the fiber so I, I consider this a simple temperature here so to check the inputs which we have defined I just go to the temperature gradient tables I use the PSC composite and uh, there are two conditions so I just sorted this particular dialog box as per the load case so I'll consider the priority as top so this particular input table will be listed out as per the load case just listed out here so now I'm considering the TG load case okay so for TG load case the input parameter is I'm considering the temperature as top there's a T1 as 30 then it is changing up to 250 degree as 7 so first part is 30 to 7 degree centigrade from 0 to 250 the next is from 0 to uh, sorry from 7 to 0 that is at a depth of 250 mm to 500 mm okay so this temperature variation I have considered here and then last one at the bottom I have considered 750 to 1 meter that is the third part which is varying from 0 to 10 degrees centigrade okay so this temperature we can't display this particular temperature here just it will show only the equivalent rectangle part here we can't display the values of the temperature gradient load okay. so now if we go to the table so these are the temperatures at top I am considering the 30 degree okay. then it is 7, 0 then it is again here at a 10 degree okay. so at each of the depth what is the temperature variation now width of the fiber, fiber. so this width of the fiber, uh, fiber is nothing but again if I go to the structure here so I am considering 0 to 250 okay what is the B value the, so I need to calculate the equivalent area here so if you refer the section property so in the section property this particular width is BL2 plus BL, BR2 so BL2 is 500 so it is equal that is 1 meter okay which is at a depth of so HL1 so it is 250 mm so we are considering 0 to 250 so it is from 0 to 250 the B is constant that is a 1 meter so that is defined here okay that is 1 meter so similarly as per this variation we need to include input this particular parameter at bottom it is a 0.4 meter So that is BL4. So this BL4 is 0.2 plus 0.2. That is 0.4 meter, which is defined here. Okay. Now stress uh, due to the temperature. So this uh, we need to calculate. That is axial stress. It is mainly it's a alpha Te. Okay. So that uh, that is calculated at every fiber location, and then the force is calculated considering this width into stress. Okay. So this is force per meter width. 
So that is calculated and then axial stress is calculated taking the cumulative of this particular forces. So here uh, cumulative of this particular forces plus the uh, area into concentration. Okay, so this force divided by area and then uh, it is calculated for the each of the cumulative location. Then whatever the force we have applied uh, which is calculated at every location, what is the location of that particular force from the CG. So again I have calculated at every location what is the CG location and then the moment is calculated considering this particular force into this lever arm. Then total force is calculated here. Some, uh, so this is the summation of this particular loads. And then uh, we, need, we consider this total moment force divided by this total force which will give the siege of that particular force for the entire section. And then the total uh, moment is calculated. So this moment will be uh, shown in the beam forces. And from this moment we have calculated. So taking the axial forces at each level and what is this temperature loads that is alpha t at this particular that is from this particular table what is this particular temperature stress so that temperature loading is calculated uh, axial plus bending stresses and that temperature at the top at each location is calculated so which is giving the 2.75 and the 3.21 So this is 2.75 at the top. So 1 and 2 are representing the top of this girder and the 4 and 3 is representing the bottom. So minus 3.2. Okay. So this will be the, uh, how, this is how we can calculate the stresses due to the temperature gradient manually as well as and we can directly get it from the software itself. So this is regarding the temperature uh, loading and uh, how to verify this with a manual calculation. Fifth case, so uh, many cases uh, what happen if you are modeling any structure using the plate type of elements. Okay, And for that plate type of elements, say whether it is a slab bridge or it's a composite structures where you are modeling the deck as a plate okay, or if, if you are modeling a complete structure as a plate type of element. So in that case, how can we define this temperature gradient load in the software? Okay. So in the Midas Civil, uh, if you refer so if you refer the input data for the temperature gradient, so this particular beam section temperature option is only applicable for the beam elements. Okay. We can't apply this variation of the temperature for the plate type of elements. So in this case what we can do we can consider one dummy elements here let me just So now uh, in this case, suppose if I am considering the 1 meter width of this particular uh, plate and for this particular plate I want to consider the temperature gradient load, okay. Say the temperature gradient load of 0.5 uh, 5 degree at the top, okay and at a certain depth say I am considering the depth of this particular plate as 0.5 meter, so I am considering up to 0.25 meter it is coming to zero. Okay. So for this particular temperature variation, what we uh, we can have a, a, another option that we can create the dummy element at the mid of this particular element, uh, the plate element, and that particular beam element has to be divided at every plate uh, meshing. Okay. So that the load will be transferring from this beam to the plate. Okay. So I'm considering this particular dimension of the plate as similar to 
the dimension of the the beam element so just let me take to the software so here if I want to apply the temperature gradient load okay. so in this case suppose I am considering here a single case for the temperature gradient this is the beam element and for this particular beam element I am considering the temperature variation at say 0.25 meter depth okay so the thickness of this uh, plate is 0.5 meter and I am considering the variation of the temperature up to 0.25 meter okay if I use temperature gradient load this temperature gradient load for the plate is only for the complete depth what is the temperature difference at top and bottom but if I want to change this so we need to uh, and if I want to apply only for partial depth so we can create a beam type of limit here which we consider as a dummy so that is the beam type of limit here and this beam type of element having the property of just uh, just only for the load distribution okay which is uh, the, the load which is applied for this particular beam element so for that we just I'm considering only a 1 mm bar okay uh, 1 mm section and just I'm considering only the area and the CG locations okay actually this particular section is equivalent to the the plate dimension only that is a 1 meter by 0.5 meter and the material property I have considered zero density for this particular material but the E value poisons ratio and thermal coefficient is equal to the plate element only so for plate element I have considered all the material properties as per the M40. So after defining this particular inputs, when you are checking the stresses, because the idea is to how to uh, apply the temperature gradient for the plate of element. So I will consider the work around as we just considering the beam element here, which is having the dummy, and just I will introduce in the this particular plate location only. If I see the results, so here I have considered one particular beam element, same as a plate element. Okay, and here I have used with the beam section temperature. Okay, here I have applied the beam section temperature for this and for this, for even though it's a plate, I have applied the beam section temperature for the dummy. Now if I go to the results part, okay, for beam type of element, if you see refer the results, say at the top, okay, so which is giving the stress of 7.91. At the top of this particular beam. If I want to see the same results in the plate, so I'll go to the stresses, plate stresses. So I apply the nonlinear temperature here. Apply. Okay. So this will be the temperature at this 0.79. So there will be minor difference at the end. So this is depending upon the force uh, stress distribution from the beam to plate. But that is uh, not constrainable, uh, so which is more or less equal to the stress. Similarly, if I see the axle deformation, so it, this is also more or less same as of the D millimeter. Okay. So this is regarding the uh, how we can apply the beam section uh, temperature for the plate image. Then coming to the FAQs, so some of the users always uh, have the queries that uh, if you refer ISC 112, so course suggests that for the uniform temperature we need to consider the E as half of the molecular velocity. And if you uh, refer, uh, if you input this particular uniform temperature in the element temperature dialog box, there is no option for defining the E, there is no option to change the E value because if you change the E value in the material property itself for the entire model it will construct the E as a E by 2 so which is not correct so for that again what we can do instead of uh, doing a separate model and uh, analyze the structure for that keeping E as E, as e by 2 what we can do we, uh, we are generally considering this uniform temperature as alpha T okay so for alpha T Either we put E by 2 or delta T by 2 or alpha T, T by 2. The total stress will be the same. Okay, considering this final value of these uh, parameters. So in that case, 
either you can make alpha by 2 as uh, sorry at this alpha or as alpha by 2 or delta t as alpha uh, delta t by 2 okay so after changing this the whole stress will be the remains same as we required for the considering the e as L, e by 2 so by which we can change this particular parameter in the final temperature or in a while defining the material properties we can change this particular parameter okay you no need to create the another model for considering the e as e by 2 second one so as uh, we have discussed that uh, some of the sections are inbuilt in the program some section library okay if you suppose consider the psi girders so if i go to the properties section properties add suppose in the case of a psi girders suppose these girders are having the unsymmetrical slab okay so for that how we can define that particular unsym slab property because if i see composite composite i girder so here we can simply specify the bc as a full width of this particular slab there is no option to define how much overhang is on the either side okay so this particular option is only applicable for the symmetrical slab so in that case if we have an unsymmetrical slab so we need to take the help of section property calculator which is there in the tools section property calculator So in this section public calculator, just set the unit size kilo ten meter. So you can create your section here, or you can create the section in the AutoCAD. So the AutoCAD section can be directly def uh, import here. So you can uh, create the section in the AutoCAD, and then from the AutoCAD you can specify this particular. Uh, you can directly import this particular section okay so now uh, for defining this particular temperature I just consider the adequate section here uh, so now if I go to the SPC file import adequate DXA so here I can space, uh, import this particular AutoCAD file. Okay. Just I am uh, taking this particular reference. Uh, so I, uh, already the videos are available for uh, creating the section using this particular SPC tool. Just what we need to do, we need to specify the material properties as this is a composite one. So we need to specify the material property for the deck and the gutter separately. That will be defined from the material and the model and material. And then as this is a composite one so the the part will be different that's the part one and part two so that we need to specify from model section composite and then generate here we need to specify how many number of composite actions will take place so i'm considering here first the girder part will be activated and after that the deck will be activated after hardening the deck the composite action will take place so then i'm considering here the number of parts as two so i will specify that particular number of part here after defining this particular number of parts i will go to the section composite and here I will specify what is part 1 and what is part 2 and whatever the material we have specified that I need to specify, uh, select here so I will assign the deck material for this and the gutter for this one se separately I now generate the section so after generating this particular section okay, we need to okay. Okay. suppose if I refer this particular section so I will go to the section properties, calculate composite property. I need to select the entire section. I need to specify the mesh size. So final, the mesh size, more accuracy you will get in the calculation of the section property. So that section property we need to give and then go to the section property and then list section property. So these properties will be calculated for this one. So this I consider the general section. If you are having the composite, this will be property, uh, property will be calculated here in the comp composite property table. So this will give the property for the individual girder slab and then for the total composite section. Okay. Now just go to the uh, model and then export this particular section okay, as a MIDA section file. So select this particular section, select the location, okay, give the name. 
So this particular section will be saved as .acc file. Then after they are selecting this particular section, now go to the properties, section properties. Just make the unit should be compatible. So section properties. So this is depending upon the type of section, whether you are considering the general section where there is no pre-stressing, okay? So that, or if say it is a RCCT girders or the PS sections of irregular cross section, that will be defined as a general section from the value option, okay? Which is there in the import ACC file. If you are having the PSC pre-stress girder or the composite type of section, so we need to go to the PSC tab and here in the PSC value, we need to import the SPC section section 5. If it is a composite type of section, so go to the composite, composite general and import here a specify okay, or the section 5. So just go to the uh, general one, I am just considering the general section, so I am just importing this particular SPC section. Okay, So the program will be calculated this particular section property here for this cross section. So create the section then assign this particular section to the required location okay so by which you can uh, import this section now how to apply the temperature gradient load for this type of section so as I said if I go to the temperature loading here in beam section temperature now we can't apply the PSC composite type of section for this even though it's a pre-stress one we have defined this particular section as a general okay we have input the section properly so for that I will go to the general section general section here now as I, as we discussed that now the program will not calculate the b or the width of the equivalent rectangle at each location we need to specify what is the b value at each level we need to calculate manually and we need to input that one okay so for this particular cross section in the AutoCAD I will consider the part here so this is the first part, then this is the second part, and this is the third part. Okay. So this is the IRC profile. So top it is 17.8 to 4, 4 to 0, then 0 to 2.1. So at each level, so this is 0.15 meter, and this is the 0.25. So I'm consider the up to 0.15 meter depth. What is the area, and what is the corresponding B value? So now if I go to the Excel. Okay. So here, I consider the three, three parts here, okay. So for this three part, part one, part two and part three. So this, the area enclosed between this top, from top to first red line, this is a part one. Then from say, first red line to second red, this is a part two and the third one is this one. So referring this particular temperature variation, I have calculated the area, okay. So this area I have calculated from the AutoCAD and for each area we know this particular h1 h2 and h3 referring this one 0 0.15 0 0.25 and 0 0.15 so what is the equivalent width okay area divided by depth so i have calculated this b value here okay now this b value i need to input here in the section definition this is the first input now another input is if i refer the first part so for this first part okay what is H1, H2, T1, T2? So already we have discussed that referring, uh, taking the reference as top. So H1 will be 0. H2 will be 0 to 0.15. Okay, so this is 0.25. T1 is 17.8. T2 is 4. And in between, the B is this one. Okay. So we need to calculate at each depth what is the corresponding temperatures and what is the equivalent width. So that I have inputted here. Just I will go to the software. Okay. So here, uh, just I will again put this one. So I will specify here the section as general, the reference position as H top. I am considering the reference as top. Material will be taken from the element, or here you can uh, user can input the material property also, as per the user defined. And then here we need to specify what is the B value. So for B value, okay. 
so p value is this one and the temperatures are 0 to 0 0.15 17.8 4 degree this is the first temperature then second temperature is from 0.15 to 0.4 okay that is for the 0.25 depth temperature is changing from 4 to 0 and then for the third part Point seven uh, so this will be changing at a depth of uh, total depth is 2.01 okay uh, sorry 2.475 so that depth is 2.325 2.475 and the temperature is changing from 0 to 2.1 so this particular temperature the input data is same just we need to calculate the B value here and this B value will be calculated at each depth location okay so this is just a difference between the general and the PC tab so for PC or composite if you are having a standard section which is possible to define from the standard library you no need to do this B value calculation manually so that's the main difference here and then the other part the stress check can be done as well the same as a general section okay so the, the one which is explained here that is the, from the advocate we need to take the section into SPC and from SPC we need to calculate at each depth what is the area and what is the equivalent B and for that particular B value and take the temperature and input it them in the beam section temperature option so uh, likewise uh, the same as the beam section temperature we can apply them and we can check the results for the temperature grid. so uh, this is regarding uh, the temperature gradient loading Thank you for attending this webinar.